Thank you for purchasing the Zeiss Humphrey Matrix 800 visual field instrument featuring frequency doubling technology. The Humphrey Matrix 800 provides accurate and reliable screening results in approximately less than one minute and full threshold test results in five minutes per eye. The instrument incorporates a large age normative database to ensure the accuracy and reliability of your tests. No trial lens is needed with plus or minus three diopters. Patients can usually wear their own correction. No eye patch is needed for the untested eye. It's automatically occluded. The test isn't affected by normal ambient lighting, so normal room lighting can be used. And it's very easy to use, so no special operator training or certification is required. You'll find your new Humphrey Matrix 800 even easier to use if you take a few minutes to watch this video before you start using the instrument in your practice. If you need more information after watching this video, please refer to the user manual. To begin, check the contents of the instrument shipping box with the packing slip. Your Humphrey Matrix 800 ships with a chin rest, keyboard tray, and printer. Because of its lightweight and small size, your Humphrey Matrix 800 can be set up virtually anywhere in your office. Once you've chosen the location, prepare the instrument for use by connecting all of the components. Lay the instrument on its side, being careful that the patient visor isn't in a position that will cause it to support the weight of the machine. Plug the patient response button into the small round connector jack next to the patient response button symbol underneath the center of the instrument. Now, insert the keyboard plug into the USB port as shown. Next, plug the printer cable into the USB port next to the network port as shown. After this step, plug the printer power cord into the Humphrey Matrix power output receptacle. To meet medical safety requirements, the supply printer must be powered from the instrument. Finally, plug the approved hospital grade power cord into the input receptacle on the instrument. Be sure all connections are fully seated. Once everything is connected properly, turn the instrument upright. Now it is time to assemble the chin rest with the keyboard tray, which will serve as the base of the instrument. Simply unpack the chin rest and follow these instructions. Snap the keyboard tray gently into the dark gray base. Lay the keyboard tray flat. Sweep the attached cords to the right side of the instrument, which is the side with the on-off switch. Then gently lift the instrument off its side and place it carefully into the base. Now, connect the printer cable into the USB port on the printer and connect the printer power cord. Affix the patient response button holder to the right patient side of the unit by peeling the tape off the holder and firmly pressing the holder in the desired position. Before plugging the unit into an appropriate power outlet, make sure that the power switch located on the left operator side of the instrument is in the O or OFF position. Now, plug the unit in and turn the power switch to the I or on position. The system will boot up in about two minutes. A status bar will indicate progress of the instrument initialization. With an ethernet cable, the Humphrey Matrix 800 can be networked in the following ways. To a DICOM compliant EMR system. To a PC network file server via shared folders. To a printer via network. Please consult your user manual for instructions on how to configure your Humphrey Matrix 800 for these networking scenarios. Your network administrator or an IT professional can provide assistance in setting up network connections. Your Humphrey Matrix 800 can be connected to a DICOM compliant data storage system, such as Zeiss's Forum. Connection to such a system can streamline workflow in many ways, including Ability to automatically pull up existing patient data prior to a test. Ability to eliminate duplicate patient entries. And ability to access identical data from all participating test modalities in numerous locations throughout the office. To access these DICOM compliant systems, set up the DICOM storage server to recognize the Humphrey matrix. Connect the Humphrey matrix to your network with an ethernet cable. Configure the DICOM gateway feature available on the Humphrey matrix. If you do not have a DICOM compliant data storage provider, you may still electronically store Humphrey Matrix reports off instrument using shared folders. To store Humphrey Matrix test results on a shared folder in your network, connect the Humphrey Matrix to your network with an Ethernet cable. Create a shared folder on your network. 
This folder will receive test results from the Humphrey matrix. Configure network settings on the Humphrey matrix, including pointing to the shared folder to which the Humphrey matrix will transmit reports. Three types of printer connections are available for the Humphrey matrix. Local printer. A printer can be connected directly to your Humphrey matrix via a USB connection. Shared printer. Your Humphrey matrix can share a printer that is connected to a computer. Network printer. Your Humphrey matrix can connect to a printer that is available on the network. Your Humphrey matrix user manual contains detailed instructions on how to perform each of these steps. Once the instrument initialization is complete, the first screen you'll see on the operator LCD screen is the F1 main menu. This screen allows you to choose all of the tests available on the instrument. Screening tests, threshold tests, and central field of view tests. You also have the ability to select by patient. Because backing up patient test data is important, the Humphrey Matrix main menu also has a backup button along with an indicator telling you the date of your last backup. You should back up your database regularly. Pick a backup schedule that fits your practice. Finally, this screen also contains a system shutdown button. Always use the shutdown button before turning off the instrument power. The main toolbar is located vertically along the right side of the display and is always visible. Use the toolbar to navigate the available functionality of the instrument. The View Patient screen F2 button is where new patients are added or existing patient entries in the database are searched, recalled, and revised. If you have DICOM Gateway enabled and are connected to a modality work list provider, you can import patient demographic and scheduled exam information from a work list. The Recall Test screen F3 button is where individual tests in the database are searched by patient or test information. The File Functions F4 screen is where the patient test database is backed up or imported, merged, or restored. User settings can also be restored from a database backup. The File Functions screen is where available software upgrades of the Humphrey Matrix system software can be performed. The System Settings F5 screen provides the operator with the ability to customize the configuration of the Humphrey Matrix Visual Field Instrument by changing default system settings to meet your preferences and practice needs. The System Settings screen is comprised of eight screens. General, Testing, Export, Backup, Networking, DICOM Gateway, Sharing, and Printing. For more information about system configuration, please consult your user manual. The Help F6 screen provides basic system information regarding the Humphrey Matrix instrument with buttons to access user information, instrument diagnostics, calibration, logging, and software installation. System information includes instrument model and serial numbers, software version numbers, calibration information, last database backup date, and error log status. The install software function integrates the software upgrade procedure with pre and post backup functions to help ensure a safe and complete upgrade process. The diagnostic screen provides basic information regarding the operational status of the Humphrey Matrix instrument. This screen is useful if you are experiencing problems with your Humphrey Matrix instrument. Problem areas are indicated by different color text. In the example shown, the red text indicates the patient response button has been disconnected. If the patient response button is indeed properly connected, customer care can assist you further diagnosing the problem. When you're ready to conduct your first test of the day, remove the calibration cap from the patient eyepiece. Replace the calibration cap when the instrument isn't in use to minimize the accumulation of dust and debris on the eyepiece. To conduct a test, from the main menu, select the button for the test that you want to perform or click the Select Patient button. Either selection proceeds to the View Patient screen, F2. On the View Patient screen, you can select an existing patient from the following sources on the Source drop-down menu. Local Database, Modality Worklist, Today's Patients, Modality Worklist, Custom Query, OM Local. Choosing Local Database allows you to access patient data located directly on the Humphrey Matrix database. 
Choosing Modality Worklist, Today's Patients, allows you to quickly display all patients' exams scheduled for today for this instrument. Modality Worklist Custom Query allows you to query for scheduled patients. These features are available only if you have DICOM Gateway enabled and are connected to a Modality Worklist provider. OM Local allows you to display all patient exams scheduled from iInfinity's OfficeMate Practice Management System. For more information on these sources, please consult the user manual. By selecting Local Database Selected from the Source drop-down menu, a new patient can be added to the Local Database by using the Add Patient button. When selecting Add Patient, the Enter New Patient screen appears. To enter a new patient, you must provide the following information at a minimum. Date of birth, first name, and last name. Alternatively, you can provide date of birth, patient ID, and issuer of ID. You'll now see the testing screen. Until the test is started, stimulus presentations are automatically displayed to demonstrate the test to the patient. The status box in the lower right-hand corner of the screen indicates that the pre-test demo is being performed. Confirm that the patient's name, ID, and date of birth are correct and that the proper test type is selected. Use the pull-down menu to select a different test type if necessary. Pull-down menus are also available if you need to change the folder that will store the test, change test speed, or change the fixation target. Test speed provides the ability to slow down the test speed. Alternative fixation targets give you the option of using a large crosshair or four dots, depending on the test type as a fixation point for patients with central fixation loss. The eye to be tested first can also be selected using this screen by clicking the OS button for the left eye. The OD selection for the right eye is the default setting. Ensure you have adequately cleaned the chin rest and visor before each patient. Check your user's manual for detailed cleaning and disinfection instructions. Slide the patient visor to the left to start with the patient's right eye. Ask your patient to sit. Adjust the seat or table height if necessary so that the patient's eyes are comfortably aligned with the patient visor. Your Humphrey matrix automatically occludes your patient's opposite eyes, so no eye patch is needed. Patients should always wear their corrective lenses, particularly if their refractive error is greater than plus or minus two diopters for central field testing, three diopters for threshold testing, or six diopters for screening. Trial lenses are recommended for patients who wear tinted or photochromatic lenses, have frames that may obstruct testing, or are not wearing the appropriate correction at the time of the test. Ask your patient to pick up and hold the patient response button, then to place his forehead on the brow rest and look into the eyepiece. Ask your patient to look at or fixate on the black dot in the center of the screen. The black dot may appear blurry to the patient. Explain that this is normal. Now, ensure the patient can see four black points or alignment tabs at the 2, 4, 7, and 10 o'clock locations while looking at the central fixation target. Proper alignment requires that the patient clearly sees all points while maintaining fixation on the black dot in the center. Aligning your patient properly and comfortably with the instrument eyepiece and chin rest is very important. With the chin rest module, you can use the chin rest height adjustment knobs. Inform the patient to put their chin in the blue marked chin rest for the right eye or the white marked chin rest for the left eye. Align the patient's head against the forehead rest by adjusting the table or seat height for proper, comfortable head position relative to the instrument. Move either the instrument or patient toward each other if needed. You'll be able to view the patient's pupil in the eye display window on your LCD when in the testing screen. The patient's pupil should be kept inside the circle on the video image for proper alignment throughout the test. A freeze button allows you to freeze the image. One millimeter tick marks on the eye display box allow you to estimate pupil diameter if desired. Pupil diameters less than three millimeters may require dilation. Clicking the freeze button again returns you to the live image. Once the patient is properly aligned, explain that a demonstration of the test is running. The patient will need to continue to stare at the black dot in the center of the screen throughout the test. Whenever the patient sees a pattern that flickers or shimmers or is striped in any area of the screen, they should momentarily press the response button once. Sometimes the patterns will be faint, other times very distinct. Either way, the patient should continue to stare at the black dot and momentarily press the response button whenever they see a pattern that flickers, shimmers, or is striped. Tell your patients they can blink their eyes whenever they want. A good time to blink is when the patient presses the response button. The patient can also pause the test at any time by holding down the response button. 
If you're satisfied that your patient understands the test and is responding well to the pretest demo, you should begin the test. Tell your patient that after a brief flash, the actual test will begin. Begin the test by clicking the Start Test button. A status bar tells you the test is progressing. Test duration is also shown as the test progresses. Three types of catch trials are indicated under the test box indicating fixation, false positive, and false negative errors. If the fixation catch trials exceed 20%, the display will turn red, indicating that you may want to pause the test to make sure your patient is fixating properly. You may need to restart or repeat the test if proper fixation wasn't maintained. More than 30% false positives will also generate a red warning. The patient is responding when no target is presented. More than 30% false negatives will generate a warning as well. In this case, the patient isn't responding to a very bright pattern in any area where he previously responded. You may pause the test at any time by pressing pause or pressing the enter key on the keypad. Press the resume button or enter key to continue. You can also cancel the test at any point and restart, test a different eye, perform a new test, or return to the main menu by pressing done testing. You can fill in the notes field at any time. You may want to make a note of how well the patient maintained fixation during the test, for example. By selecting the Info tab, you may enter additional test information at any time, including diagnostic code, procedure code, pupil diameter, visual acuity, IOP, horizontal and vertical cup to disc ratio, and patient RX. A typical 24 to 2 full threshold test will take about 5 minutes. During that time, you should watch your patient's alignment and test responses on the testing screen. A Y is shown at the tested location when the patient responds. An N is shown when there's no patient response. At the conclusion of the right eye test, the unit will beep and the Humphrey matrix will automatically store the test in your patient's record. You can now choose Start Left Eye, New Test, or Done Testing. Align your patients and give them the same instructions as you did for the right eye test. Click the Start Left Eye button. When the tests are completed for both eyes, results are automatically saved to the instrument's hard drive, to a USB stick, and sent to the printer. If you prefer changing the default locations for saving test results, please see the System Settings section of the User Manual. You can also save a test to a CDR W, USB storage device, or a network share location in any of these formats. JPEG saves the test results as a photo image of the printout in JPEG, Joint Photographic Experts Group format. Database Backup Format, FDT2, saves the test in Humphrey Matrix Database 8.0 format, which can only be read by a Humphrey Matrix Instrument Running System Software 8.0. XML, which is used in clinical research. If you have enabled DICOM Gateway, you can save the test results printout to a DICOM system in PDF format. If you are using iInfinity's OfficeMate practice management software with the Humphrey Matrix, you can also save to the remote connection location. The remote connection only saves in combined PDF and data format. You can view results from previous tests by selecting a patient from the F2 View Patient screen and clicking the Recall Test button. You can also select the desired tests from the F3 Recall Test menu by using the trackpad. Use the trackpad and select one test at a time. You may select one section at a time by holding down Shift key or select multiple entries by holding down Control. If you select multiple entries, choose Test Details on the pull-down menu at the top of the Test Detail screen to select a specific test, or use the Previous and Next buttons at the Test Detail screen. You can view raw threshold decibel levels of the results, or you can use the pull-down menu to select various graphical representations of the test, including grayscale, total deviation probability plot, total deviation in decibels, pattern deviation plot, and pattern deviation in decibels. You can select right eye or left eye in each viewing area so you can show two different graphical representations of the same eye. Test data displayed includes test time, catch trials, mean deviation, and statistical significance for both mean deviation and pattern deviation. And you can recall or modify any notes or test information you enter during the testing. After viewing, you can select print to obtain a printed result, delete to permanently delete the test, or save as to save the test.
You can back up the Humphrey Matrix database to a CD, USB drive or disk, or network location. You should back up your database regularly on a schedule that fits your practice. To make a backup copy of the testing database, in the File Functions screen, select Database Backup and choose the location to save the backup in the dialog box that appears. The user can merge Humphrey Matrix databases, full or partial, from multiple Humphrey Matrix instruments into one instrument if desired. If more than one instrument is in use at the same location or practice, it is a good idea to merge or synchronize the databases. A conflict resolution feature is available with the Humphrey Matrix to help minimize and eliminate duplicate patient records. Restore Database restores the latest full backup and all partial backups. All user settings on the System Settings screen are backed up with Database Backup. Use Restore User Settings to restore only the user settings from a database backup. Choose Upgrade System to Upgrade System software with new releases provided by Carl Zeiss Meditech. Consult your user manual for detailed steps on each function. Every screen on your Humphrey Matrix has a shutdown button in the lower right corner. Always click the shutdown button and wait for the shutdown to complete before turning off the instrument power switch. After you click the shutdown button, the screen will appear showing the shutdown process. Wait until you see power down on the screen to turn the power off. There's no need to shut down the instrument unless it's not going to be used for eight hours or more. The instrument automatically goes into standby mode after 15 minutes of inactivity. At the end of the day, put the calibration cap over the patient eyepiece and cover the instrument with the supplied dust cover. Never cover the instrument if the power is still on. Outside of routine exterior cleaning, your Humphrey Matrix will give you years of maintenance-free service. Check your user's manual for detailed cleaning and disinfection instructions. If you ever have service-related questions, check the user's manual, the diagnostic screen, or contact Carl Zeiss. And thank you again for purchasing the Carl Zeiss Humphrey Matrix Visual Field Instrument.